Hello everyone, it's Living Online here for Server Pro, and today I'll be showing you how to manually install Forge and Forge mods on your server. Firstly, you're going to have to download Forge itself on your client. You can do that by heading to this page, the link will be in the description. As you can see on the side, it'll show a list of all the Minecraft versions you can use Forge for. Since I'll be using the latest version of Minecraft, I'll be pressing on the 1.18.2 tab and pressing the installer button. However, if you use previous versions, it'll come up with two main boxes. For no issues to occur, we suggest clicking installer on the download latest box. However, if you come across any errors, you should use the recommended installer instead. When you click on the installer button, it should redirect you to this page. You simply have to wait a couple seconds and then press skip for the file to begin downloading. When that's finished, we recommend dragging the file to your desktop so it's easier to follow the next few steps. Once you're there, double click on your .jar file for this window to pop up. If it doesn't show up as a .jar file or doesn't open up this installer box at all, it may mean you don't have the latest version of Java downloaded. If that's the case for you, we've already made a tutorial on how to download the latest version of Java, so we'll also leave the link to that in the description. However, you simply want to make sure that install client is selected and press OK. Wait for the installer to finish downloading all the necessary files onto your computer and when this window pops up, press OK once more. To make sure everything is working as intended so far, you then want to open up your Minecraft launcher. If you see the Forge client in the bottom left, it means you have followed these steps correctly. Now that Forge is installed for your client, we'll have to install some important files needed for later on. Before that though, right click on your desktop and create a new folder. You can name it anything for now, as this is a folder that we're going to use to store necessary files. Afterwards, open up the installer jar once more. Now make sure that the install server option is ticked and not the install client option. Below that, you want to click on the three dots button to open up this files explorer window. Here you just have to make sure that you set the folder that the server is going to be installed to as the folder we just created. When you've found it, make sure to select it and press open. All you have to do then is press OK and wait for the installation to finish. It may take a couple seconds to finalise, but you'll know it's done when it says successfully downloaded Minecraft server. It'll then also have all the files downloaded inside the folder you created. For this step, make sure you go to the server.pro website and head to your server's control panel. At the dashboard, make sure that your server is offline and then head to the backups tab. If you have any files on your server, it's recommended to make a manual backup as we're going to have to reinstall the server to continue the tutorial. On the reinstall page, make sure that Minecraft Java is selected, the type is set to vanilla and that the version is the same version as the Forge server and client you installed. Since I downloaded the Forge server and client for 1.18.2, I've also selected 1.18.2 here. Before continuing, ensure yes is selected for the remove files option. This is crucial as deleting files will prevent errors from happening and lets you follow the tutorial smoothly. Press reinstall and wait for the server to make all the necessary changes. When it turns on by itself, it means the server has finished reinstalling, however you want to make sure it's offline once again before proceeding. After that's done, head to the files tab and this is where we're going to be dragging all the necessary files. Back on your desktop, open up the folder that you installed the Forge server to and then drag all the files inside into the files section on your server. Wait until the upload process is complete and when it's done, open up the run.sh file. There you just want to select the text starting from at libraries up until .txt and copy it. Afterwards, go into the advanced settings on the server dashboard. On the start parameters section, select the text starting from dash jar up until the end and delete it. Then simply right click and paste the text from before. Once that's done, make sure to save changes and as you can see on the dashboard, it now says that the server type is set to custom. All you have to do then is turn on your server and wait for it to fully boot up. To check if it's fully booted up, you can go to console. After a little bit, you'll know it's done if it says successfully initialized permission handler. Lastly, you can double check everything is working as intended by heading to the files folder. If you see a mods folder there, it means you have followed these steps correctly. 
To install Forge mods now, all you need to do is drag in the mod files you desire into the server's mod folder, as long as they are the same version as your server and your client. I'll quickly be showing you how to download a Forge mod so you can follow these steps accordingly. In this example, I'm using the CurseForge website to browse through some Minecraft mods. I'll be downloading Mr. Crayfish's Furniture mod. When you find a mod you like the look of, press the Files section and scroll down until you find the same version as all your previous files. Then you can press the arrow to be redirected to this page. After a couple seconds, it'll automatically download the file for you. Now all you have to do is simply head back to server.pro and drag the file downloaded into the mods folder again. Once more, restart the server and now the mod is installed. We're not done yet though, you have to make sure that the mod is downloaded on your server and your client, so you'll need to press the Windows key and the R key at the same time on your keyboard. Make sure the pop-up box says percentage, app data percentage and press enter. Double click on your .minecraft folder, head into the mods folder and then drag the mod file into it. That's it, now your mod is installed on both your server and your client. To double check everything is working as intended, head to the dashboard and copy the host name. Then open up your Minecraft launcher. At the bottom left make sure the Forge client is selected once again and press play. When Minecraft has loaded up, head to the multiplayer section and click add server. In the server address section, paste the host name and then press done. All you have to do then is head into your server. As you can see, if I go into creative, I can now mess around with modded furniture items. This means your modded items should be there too. However, if they're not, you may have missed a step in the tutorial, so feel free to go back and refollow the steps again. Well that's it for this video, if you have any questions make sure to leave them down below and if you enjoyed this video subscribe to see more from our channel. Thank you for watching!